but Boston was one of the planes that struck one of the World Trade Center buildings this morning. We are also receiving information that all federal office buildings have been evacuated. And now for the very latest, uh, let's go back to my colleague, Lee Harris. And this is 1010 Winds, WINS, New York, and uh, the world is a very different place from the way we left it about two and a half hours ago. Let us recap for you the horrible, tragic events that have occurred since approximately 8.43 this morning. The first event, a plane crashing into the World Trade Center, one of the two towers. This was around 8.43 this morning. As we were coming to grips with that, getting our reporters to the scene, a second plane crashed into the second tower of the World Trade Center. President Bush went on the radio in uh, Sarasota, Florida, where he was attending an educational event and announced that there had been a terrorist attack, an apparent terrorist attack. He called it a national tragedy and made plans to return to Washington. A short time after that, an aircraft crashed near the Pentagon in northern Virginia. That was just about an hour after the attacks in New York. Government buildings in Washington, including the Capitol and the White House, were evacuated. Officials cited a obviously very credible threat of a federal terrorist attack. The Federal Aviation Administration then shut down all aircraft traffic nationwide. And uh, 1010 Winds News now has learned that Mayor Giuliani has uh, something to say. So let's go to him live now. Streets. I guess we're going to be moving a large number of ambulances and uh, emergency personnel in and out of there all day. I've talked to the governor. He is putting the National Guard on alert so that they can relieve our police officers and our firefighters later this afternoon. And we've asked the federal government for help uh, from, the, from the urban search and rescue team. So uh, right now, we're using all of our police and firefighters and emergency personnel to help the people down there. Later on, we're probably going to need uh, reinforcements. Mayor Giuliani, I realize that it must be uh, more than a chaotic situation, particularly since the, the bunker has been compromised and cordoned off. But can you give us any sense, there are so many people watching now who must have loved ones down in that area and are concerned I, uh, of, of the heart, systematic... My goes out to them. I've never seen yes. anything uh, like this. I uh, was there from shortly after it happened and saw people jumping out of the World Trade Center. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And all that I can tell them is that, that every resource that we have is attempting to rescue as many people as possible. And it, the end result is going to be some horrendous number of lives lost. I don't think we know yet. But, but right now, we have to just focus on saving as many people as possible. Can you give us a sense of if there is, in fact, some system being implemented, what that system is and uh, what, where people are being taken? People, people are triaging. People are being taken to uh, every area hospital possible, even uh, virtually within minutes. Uh, I drove down right past St. Vincent's Hospital, and I could see them actually on the street ready uh, to take people, and that was within minutes of, of the, uh, for the, first, uh, the first airplane hitting the World Trade Center. So the, ho the hospitals are ready. Uh, we'll be moving them to all different area hospitals, uh, triaging them. The main thing is having those streets open so that we can get people in and out of the southern part of Manhattan as quickly as possible so that we can move them you know, the hospitals all over the city. And Mayor Giuliani, we'll, uh, we'll let you... In place. They're, they're doing it. Uh, we just need the cooperation of people in, in getting out of there. We'll let you get back to uh, the operations there, Thank and you, we Matt. do appreciate you Thank taking you the time. Thank you. Mayor Giuliani live on CNN, apparently from the City Emergency Management Operations Center. As uh, we were going through the list of disasters that have befallen us this morning, uh, we did not even yet get to the fact that uh, both towers of the World Trade Center collapsed after being hit by aircraft one about 10 minutes after the other. And uh, 1010 Wins account executive Joan Fleischer, who was the first to call in the tragedy, witnessed both of those go down. Joan? Hi, I'm still here. You can hear planes overhead that are police planes and I guess FBI, whatever. I can't really see them, but they're circling to keep everyone else away. Um, all I still see at this point is uh, I hear tons of police cars and fire engines and ambulances, and I see only black smoke at this point. I have no idea how far the Twin Towers, if they crumbled completely to the ground or not, just tons of black smoke. No, it seems like they've gone down uh, most of the way. You also uh, were a witness to the same horrific sight as Mayor Giuliani, and that was people jumping from the tower before, uh, I guess that was the North Tower, right. before it collapsed. It was, it was, I couldn't believe my eyes. At first I thought it was debris, and then I realized it wasn't. 
It wasn't an explosion. It was actually, I think, people choosing to... I can't say for sure, but it seemed like people made the decision to go. There were like a group of six or eight people that had, like one right after the other. Mm, unfortunately, it appears that uh, it wouldn't have worked out for them either way. Right. Thank right. you. Uh, thank you for sticking with us, Joan. 1010 Wins reporter Juliet Papa is uh, down on Worth Street, and uh, you got there obviously after the uh, planes hit the building, but buildings. But you were there when they went down. Is that correct? Well, apparently, I was on Broadway when that first uh, tower collapsed because I was trying to drive south, and uh, I see this huge puff of smoke and people. Literally, it turned into a whole carnival looking bizarre area because people were walking on the street at the time on their cell phones just even looking at the smoke initially from the crash and looking at that gaping hole that was in the World Trade Center but all of a sudden you saw this enormous cloud of brownish gray smoke and people just turned and started running north, running in everybody's way, falling on top of each other. They had just been running, running up the block as trying to get through further downtown so I pulled my car over and I was managing to walk further downtown. I got to a pay phone when I was on live with you and then uh, uh, an FBI agent yanked me off because people started running again. Police officers and FBI agents were screaming because the second tower was coming down. So we all had to evacuate. They appear to be evacuating all of lower Manhattan. I see coffee carts abandoned. I see stores that were closed up and shuttered already. And FBI agents are just swarming. And I am in just sort of the City Hall uh, FBI federal building area at this point. Uh, there is just smoke and debris everywhere, people walking around with masks on their face. There was a gentleman next to me on another payphone whose daughter works in the building. She works on the 92nd floor, and he's calling his wife. He's trying to get through to make sure uh, if he can find her, if he can locate her, if she's okay. He said she survived the first one. He doesn't know what's happening with this at this point. He's trying to get some information, if possible, on her. She works for an investment company. Mr. Morris, if you could talk to me right now. Tell me what happened. Hello? Okay, uh, basically, I was on the phone with my daughter earlier this morning, and uh, she let out a scream, and that's all I heard. Everything went dead after that. Can you tell us where she works, what floor she was on, how long she's been there? Uh, she's been working for Fiduciary Trust International about seven years. She's on the 92nd floor. And you said she witnessed or she experienced the first uh, explosion? Yes, that's correct. She witnessed the first explosion, and she made it through that, and hopefully she'll make it through this one. Okay, have you heard any word on her at all, any condition, any situation? No word, no word yet, but I just got another message. My son, who works in Washington at the Pentagon, is also missing now. All right, so we're having one tragedy after another here. Uh, Mr. Robert Marr is just trying to find out what happened to his children. Lee? All right, and indeed, uh, another plane did crash into the Pentagon this morning and set at least part of that building on fire. Mayor Giuliani has asked Governor Pataki for help, and the governor has agreed to put the National Guard on alert to help out the city police and fire department dealing with the unfortunate chain of events in Manhattan. The mayor says he's also asking for federal assistance. Of course, they have problems of their own in, in Washington this morning. The mayor says people are being taken to all area hospitals, and the main thing is to get people out of lower Manhattan. Uh, this is obviously having an effect on the city's infrastructure. The tunnels and bridges uh, into and out of the city are for the most part closed down. At last report, the subway system was closed down as well. 1010 wins senior correspondent Stan Brooks is in Chinatown this morning. Stan? Hello, Stan. Okay. Um, it's here's just, Stan. Hello? Hi, Stan. Hi. Uh, I, I've never seen anything like this in, in all my life. Uh, just I've been driving around, I've been walking around. Just uh, in lower Manhattan, uh, near the federal courthouse in Foley Square, when I came driving down there, I saw thousands and thousands of people just wandering uptown. I guess they'd been evacuated from the area where the explosions were, and they just had to come out of there, and they're just wandering aimlessly, but going definitely walking uptown. Uh, many of them had white chalk on their face. Then I found this man uh, just uh, standing by a car with a, a woman alongside of him. They both seemed stunned, and he told me what happened. Yeah, I caught an explosion, and... Uh just got consumed by the smoke and the debris. And it turned everything like night over there. He couldn't see where you were going. And um, we're coming down like maybe about three blocks away from the World Trade Center. And there's like continuous explosions going on over there. You're all covered with white. If it wasn't for an office building, I don't know if I'd be standing here right now talking to you because that's the only place we found some type of safe haven. And people were generous. 
and they gave us water. And we broke on a city bus to stay on there first. But then we couldn't breathe inside because the smoke is it's like it's taking all the oxygen out of the air. It looked like they came out of a war zone. Uh, as I wandered around here by the federal courthouse, I saw armed agents uh, patrolling the streets, walking up and down and shooing other people away. In Columbus Park, right in Chinatown, behind the criminal court building, uh, there's a big park that has been taken over by the FBI. I don't know whether it's a mobilization point or the fact that they've had to evacuate the 26 Federal Plaza, which is where the FBI is, but hundreds of agents in jackets and clothes and suits and whatever just milling in their police cars and uh, ambulances and fire trucks and other emergency vehicles just racing by, by uh, sirens blaring. I try to go uptown. I was forced to go uptown at one point on 3rd Avenue, the Bowery. It's just a sea of traffic. It reminded me of all the movies you see of Africa and Asia where there's wars going on and people, the uh, the stranded, the refugees are just wandering, not knowing where to go, but wandering away from the disaster scene. It, 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 it boggles your mind. It's scary. I went inside the federal courthouse a little while ago to try to use their phones. Their phones aren't working. It's tough to get a phone that doesn't tell you the system is busy, but they just stand in guard in there. They've emptied out the courthouse, and making sure that all the judges, all the clerks, and everybody else in there is out of the building. Uh, they fear any federal building, any prominent building, is a target. All right, Stan. Uh, looks it's like incredible. looks like looks like the war is here now, although it's not entirely clear who this uh, war is with at this point. We do know that uh, one of the two planes that crashed into the uh, World Trade Center was an American Airlines flight from Boston to Los Angeles. Uh, American Airlines has scheduled a news conference for. 11.30. We may find out more about that. That plane reportedly was hijacked, and there's word that the FBI was looking into a hijack right before uh, the crash. Uh, also, another plane has crashed into the Pentagon. No word on the specifics of that. We had a report earlier that a plane had crashed in western Pennsylvania, and again, with uh, this much going on, it's very hard to get uh, any kind of detailed information. The uh, information we've been looking for all morning is the extent of the uh, casualties from this uh, horrific attack. We can only assume that they're massive. And Mayor Giuliani, who was on CNN a short time ago, indicated that he didn't have any numbers, but uh, he did indicate that no one was going to be happy with the with the numbers we would get eventually. Urge them to remain calm, to remain at home, or to remain at their place of business, unless they're in Lower Manhattan. By that I mean south of Canal Street. If you're south of Canal Street, get out. Walk. And walk slowly, uh, carefully. There are plenty of police around, but just walk directly. If you can't figure out what else to do, just walk directly north. That'll get you out of the dangerous smoke area. It'll also not do us a big favor. It'll open up those streets because we're going to be moving a large number of ambulances and uh, emergency personnel in and out of the all day. Well, 1010 Winds reporter uh, Steve Kastenbaum is still in lower Manhattan. Are they moving you out too, Steve? No, actually, I managed to duck into uh, the surrogate courts building just on the other side of City Hall as they were forcing everybody to walk north or over the Brooklyn Bridge just to get out of uh, Lower Manhattan any way possible. Uh, the, the story of getting in here was uh, was bizarre enough. Uh, the uh, Brooklyn Bridge was shut down, only being uh, uh, open for emergency vehicles heading into the city from Brooklyn after the planes had crashed into the uh, World Trade Center buildings. And uh, walking towards Brooklyn, thousands upon thousands of people uh, looking over their shoulders, looking up at this most incredible sight of the two World Trade Center buildings on fire. And then as soon as our car got into Lower Manhattan by City Hall, it happened. You heard the rumbling. You heard the people screaming, gasping, crying as uh, the South Tower just toppled over onto Lower Manhattan, creating an immense cloud of debris and dust. Then about a half an hour later, the same thing happened with the second World Trade Center Tower, toppled over onto Lower Manhattan. Now the, uh, the landscape of the city forever changed, apparently at the hand of terrorists here in New York. People were running in every which direction, covered from head to toe in gray dust, many covering their mouths with whatever they could. A lot of them were injured. Uh, they were wrapped in bandages, an arm, a head, a leg. Uh, many of the folks had on what uh, we uh, see as a triage uh, little uh, uh, tickets on them around their necks, meaning that they had been taken care of, evaluated by emergency services uh, people, and were then just getting out of the area. Uh, it's, it's, it's incomprehensible. I can't can't even put into words the scene uh, when I got out of that car and just watched as this building, the World Trade Center that has stood there for as long as I can remember, 
just slowly toppled over onto lower Manhattan. And all I could think of was the folks, the emergency services people who were most, uh, most presumably inside that building fighting the fire, the folks who might have been trapped on top of the fire on the floors above. Again, the first plane struck at a little bit after a quarter to nine. So you must remember that uh, the World Trade Center buildings together, uh, if memory serves me correct, house about 50,000 employees. No doubt many of them were already at work at that uh, morning hour. So again, uh, the loss of life, uh, one can only imagine, must be immense. Again, we have no official word yet, though, on how many uh, people uh, have died in this terrorist, apparent terrorist attack. Lee? All right, Steve. And again, uh, now that the smoke is beginning to clear just a little bit, we're getting a look at the uh, new skyline of Manhattan, which more than anything else resembles the pre-1970 skyline of Manhattan. Absent both towers of the World Trade Center, they both collapsed this morning. Uh, getting a little late information now about uh, another plane crash that we mentioned earlier, one in western Pennsylvania at the uh, Somerset County Airport. That plane is believed to be a Boeing 767 or a 747. It is unclear if the crash is related to any of the terrorist attacks, but uh, certainly that would have to be suspected this morning. The plane either originated in New York and, and or Cleveland and was bound for Chicago. So we're waiting for additional information on that tragedy as if we didn't have enough of them this morning. And here to sort of recap the situation, 1010 Winds newsman James Faraday. Lee, indeed, the nation's capital is in a state of chaos this morning following the suspected terrorist attacks. All of Washington, D.C.'s federal office buildings have been evacuated, including the White House. We're getting some uh, late information here. Intelligence sources telling Fox News Channel that the plane that struck the Pentagon heliport this morning was a hijacked commercial airliner. Eyewitnesses say it looked like a U.S. airplane, and that appears to have been the modus operandi of these terrorists. Uh, that's what we saw with the World Trade Center. Uh, apparently hijacked airliners flying into the Twin Towers this morning. Fox News Channel's David Schuster is at the Pentagon with the latest. According to counterintelligence sources, they confirmed that it was a plane that crashed into the south end of the Pentagon near the helipad. Uh, this is a route that uh, commercial aircraft mm -hmm. flying into National Airport, which is just a few miles the way they take sometimes on final approach as they come to the airport. A portion of the Pentagon collapsed after that blast, and uh, as was the case with the World Trade Center, uh, large plumes of black smoke can now be seen billowing from the Pentagon. Firefighters are on the scene doing what they can to uh, limit the damage. Another plane reportedly headed for the Pentagon. U.S. fighter jets are assembling to track that aircraft. As we mentioned just moments ago, a large plane has crashed in western Pennsylvania. Officials at Somerset County Airport outside Pittsburgh say the plane went down just north of the airport. Uh, that would be about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. The plane is believed to be a Boeing 767. It went down about 10 o'clock New York time, about 8 miles east of Jennerstown, Pennsylvania. The crash came after this morning's terror attacks in the World Trade Center and then another plane crash at the Pentagon. It's not clear if the crash is related to the others, and there's no word yet on injuries or fatalities. Air travel, of course, is not an option across the nation today. The Federal Aviation Administration has shut down flights nationwide. It also says all transatlantic flights, which were bound for the U.S., are now being diverted to Canada. The White House, along with many other federal buildings in Washington, has been evacuated as a precaution. Fox News Channel's Jim Angle is there. The roads around the White House, the streets around the White House were blocked seconds ago. Uh, members of the Uniform Division of the Secret Service ran out to intersections and started diverting traffic. There are emergency vehicles on almost every block around the White House. The road south of the White House has also been blocked. And as you know, the White House is being evacuated. Federal employees are standing on the street corners in and around the White House, uh, having left the building for fear of another attack. Fox News Channel's Brian Wilson now with the latest on that second hijacked plane in the Washington area. Capitol Police have completely evacuated the grounds of the Capitol, and they have told us, quote, there is a plane that's been hijacked. It is south of Washington headed this way. And this local note just in, all Metro North commuter railroad service is canceled. 1010 Winds coverage continues now with Lee Harris. All right, James, we've been bringing people up to date on how we got to where we are in a very short period of time, a matter of uh, three hours from the initial report of a plane crashing into one of the World Trade Center towers, followed by our report of a...
excuse me, a report of a second plane crashing into the towers and then eventually followed by both towers collapsing. This gentleman was working in the World Trade Center this morning, expecting a normal day and getting anything but. There's no words to describe what's going on out there. I mean, you see bodies just coming a half hour later, still coming out of the goddamn sky. Devastating. Devastating. I can't imagine anything worse than this. It's got to be... I can't imagine. You know everybody on the plane must have died. The floor, I got friends of mine on 104th floor, friends on other buildings. I just spoke to one of my friends a half hour prior to that, getting ready to go upstairs to go to work. I mean, I've seen a lot of construction accidents. I've seen a lot of bad things happen. I've never seen a jet fall out of the sky into a building, no less once, but twice. And we've just received some additional word on the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania near uh, Jenkintown, I believe is the town, and it was a flight bound from uh, Chicago to New York, uh, 767. More information on that coming up as it's available. All of our reporters have been uh, mustered and sent downtown. 1010 Winds newsman uh, Al Jones is one of the latest to arrive on the scene, Al. Well, Lee, I made it all the way to Warren and uh, West Broadway, where a number of cars are on fire in the middle of the street with the debris that has fallen off of uh, number one World Trade Tower. We can't see the tops of the towers. You probably have a better view from TV cameras. But all you see now is a large black cloud. In fact, the entire portion of lower Manhattan is covered with a quarter to a half inch of ash. The only thing I can compare it to is... Mount St. Helens in 1980, when I was in western Montana, it looked the same way. People running around with uh, wearing masks. I have a paper mask on to protect myself. Police now pushing everybody back past chambers. They want to clear off at least 10 blocks on all sides of the trade towers as they continue to battle this catastrophe. Al Jones, 1010 Winds, reporting live from lower Manhattan. Of course, the airspace over the United States has been locked down. In addition, locally, uh, the bridges and tunnels into and out of the city have been shut down. Subway service is shut, and now we hear, hear that Metro North is also shut down. And uh, Pete Toriello is over at uh, Shadow Traffic to give us a more comprehensive look at the uh, traffic and transit situation. Uh, Pete? New York. Uh, so, uh, Metro North is shut down. The Long Island Railroad is shut down, and we also have uh, no service coming into the city, at least with uh, New Jersey Transit. Any of the rail lines, city subways in Manhattan are also shut down. They are trying to get some service uh, up and running in the outer boroughs, but nothing in Manhattan for now. As you've been hearing, all of the airports are shut down from coast to coast. Very eerie sightly as we uh, pan around on the jam cams here and look at the George Washington Bridge and see absolutely no traffic on it. Uh, large trucks parked across the mouth of the Holland Tunnel to uh, deny access. And the Lincoln Tunnel shut down in both directions. We have the Midtown Tunnel. The Battery Tunnel are shut down. Uh, we are getting some word now that uh, at the Triborough Bridge, the Queensbound side is open, but the Bronx and Manhattan-bound leg of the Triborough are still closed. Also, the Whitestone and Throgs Neck Bridges are also operating in both directions. The Outer Bridge Crossing, the Gothels Bridge, the Verrazano, the Bayonne Bridges are also closed at this time. And uh, we'll have more information as it becomes available. Lee? All right, Pete, thank you for that update. Uh, again, the World Trade Center towers are no more. They have both collapsed. And uh, looking at a helicopter scene on, on television, we don't really even see stumps of the uh, World Trade Center towers where they once soared 110 stories into the air, once being about... Uh, Two and a half hours ago. Seems like a lifetime ago now, but it wasn't very long ago. Who might be responsible for all of this? That uh, question obviously being bandied about this morning. President Bush decided fairly early on that it was likely the work of terrorists. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. Now, there is a word from Sheikh Ahmed Yassan. He is the spiritual leader of Hamas. He says the following, quote, First of all, we don't support attacks on civilians and we don't support aggression toward innocent people. However, the United States should revise its current stance and look again at its position very carefully towards people all over the world. If the U.S. doesn't want to be targeted and suffer the same way as other people do through oppression, injustice, and exploitation. In that regard, America finds itself today weak 
weakened in the face of the rest of humanity taking its own revenge against American oppression and injustice. And these are the words of Sheikh Ahmed Yassin. He is the spiritual leader of Hamas. Tintin Wins newsman James Faraday also has more on the uh, development, the investigation into who is responsible for the, uh, the carnage. James? Well, the sources tell Fox News Channel that the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine has claimed responsibility for today's bombings. However, the Israeli government sources uh, believe that Osama bin Laden is responsible. And certainly when one assesses the size, the scope, the magnitude of today's disaster, it does have the earmarks of an Osama bin Laden attack. Osama bin Laden, of course, the international terrorist mastermind. Late word from Fort Worth, Texas, that American Airlines says it lost two aircraft carrying a total of 156 people. Two flights were involved. The first flight, apparently a flight from Dulles in, in the Washington area to Los Angeles. That flight believed to be carrying 54 passengers. The second flight from Boston to Los Angeles... And uh, presumably that flight was carrying the balance of that total number of 156. No word yet if uh, these flights were involved in the World Trade Center attacks earlier this morning or on the Pentagon attack that followed. But again, American Airlines now says it lost two aircraft carrying a total of 156 people. And initial reports say that the, uh, the flights, one was from uh, Dulles Airport outside Washington to Los Angeles. And the other flight was a flight from Boston to Los Angeles. Lee? All right, James. We uh, put out the call earlier for firefighters to respond to uh, their fire stations, regardless of whether they were on duty or scheduled for duty or not. Now, St. Vincent's Hospital on West 11th Street down in Greenwich Village is asking any plastic surgeons and burn specialists to report there. Any plastic surgeons and burn specialists who are available should report to St. Vincent's Hospital. Of course, there are other hospitals in the city that are treating the victims of these tax attacks as well, but right now it is St. Vincent's putting out the call for plastic surgeons and burn specialists. If you will report there, your help will be greatly appreciated. 1010 Winds News Director Ben Meverack, you were in Brooklyn. I understand you've now made it into lower Manhattan. Ben? Yeah, I'm on uh, White Street and Broadway where some of the folks have been uh, taken to be treated. Uh, the EMTs, of course, are always the heroes in something like this. Uh, there are folks here being treated. Uh, I'm standing with uh, Musa Diaz, one of the folks from the EMTs. He's covered in ash. His pants are ripped. He's got a bump on the head. He was in there. Because of the technology, though, uh, Lee, what I'll do is I'll ask him the first question. If you have a follow-up, you can ask him uh, from there. Uh, Musa, you were, you were outside, obviously, not inside the World Trade Center when it, when it went down and what it exploded. But tell me where you were and, and how you got yourself involved inside the, uh, inside the collapse. All right, I was involved. I was treating all the uh, patients, and um, we're in the uh, triad section, right directly across the street from the uh, Twin Towers. And uh, all of a sudden, we heard a rumble. It was like an avalanche. And uh, everybody started running, and we were running for our lives. I've never seen anything like this before. And um, uh, the smoke was horrendous. You couldn't see in front of you. Uh, I know what firefighters go through now. Um, I, I bumped my head, I, and a cameraman who saved my life, I saw a beam of light. That's all I could see. And uh, we both went into a city bus by feeling, touching around. And uh, we just started uh, telling people to come in and you know, get some air in there. And I really got to thank that cameraman. He really saved my life. And I never cried before. Do you, do you have any? I'm sorry. Do you have any sense of how many of your colleagues might have been in either of the towers well, when they went down? I'm still crying now. I, I got my partner. Uh, and we both ran, and I still can't find him. And uh, he's the type of guy that he has no fear. He'll stay there and help to the, to the end, you know. And he just—I I don't know where he is. All right. Uh, well, we'll we'll, we'll hope that he is okay, and we'll set you loose now to uh, help him and uh, help any other people who may need your help. Yeah, and we tried. There's a lot. I really feel bad for the elderly. You know, the, the ones in the canes, they can't really run from the smoke. It, it was like a rumble. It, it was just like an avalanche. You couldn't see. And um, I really feel bad for them. I really do. All right. Well, thank you for helping and continuing to help. We expect your help will be needed for some time to come. We've uh, developed some additional information now on that uh, plane crash in Pennsylvania. And let's go live to 1010 Winds newsman James Faraday.
Police CNN reports that that uh, plane crash in western Pennsylvania outside of Pittsburgh in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, was United Airlines Flight 93. Uh, that was a flight that began in Newark and was to terminate in San Francisco again. The plane that went down in western Pennsylvania, Flight 93 of United Airlines, that began in Newark and was to terminate in San Francisco. It crashed this morning in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, uh, about a little over an hour outside of Pittsburgh. And uh, there's no other information about that flight, although United Airlines says it is concerned about another one of its flights. Now, American Airlines has confirmed that it lost two aircraft carrying a total of 164 passengers and crew members. The airline just moments ago saying that uh, those two flights were hijacked and crashed in today's terrorist attacks. And uh, sadly confirming that all 164 passengers and crew members on board those two flights are dead. And we can conjecture from this that one of those flights hit one of the World Trade Center towers and the other was likely the plane that hit the Pentagon, correct? Uh, that is unclear at this point, but that's uh, certainly one of the theories that uh, is active uh, as, as as we go on, as we move forward. Um, the uh, American Airlines has not said anything beyond that at this point. Uh, the confirmation came uh, just moments ago in a statement issued at American's headquarters in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, those were uh, two flights, one of them from uh, Dulles to Los Angeles. Uh, that flight was carrying 54 passengers. The second flight was from Boston to Los Angeles, uh, presumably carrying the balance of that total number of 164. Okay, well, in addition to all the uh, major buildings, the Capitol, the Pentagon, the Treasury, the U.S. Supreme Court that have been evacuated, all federal government offices in the Washington area have been closed for the day now. All employees have been told that they may leave their offices immediately, and no doubt they did not have to be told twice. Mayor Giuliani went on CNN earlier this hour. He asked everybody to clear out of lower Manhattan and probably people there didn't need to be asked twice either. Urge them to remain calm, to remain at home, or to remain at their place of business unless they're in Lower Manhattan. By that I mean south of Canal Street. If you're south of Canal Street, get out, walk, and walk slowly, uh, carefully. There are plenty of police around, but just walk directly. If you can't figure out what else to do, just walk directly north. That'll get you out of the dangerous smoke area. It'll also do us a big favor. It'll open up those streets because we're going to be moving a lot large number of ambulances and uh, emergency personnel in and out of there all day. On the other side of the Hudson, police are now evacuating the passenger terminals, all three of them at Newark International Airport. That airport has been closed since the terrorist attack on the World Trade Center towers. And, of course, all of the airspace in the United States is locked down at this point. No planes are being allowed to depart. International flights are being diverted to Canada. As for the question of who is responsible here, the editor of a London-based Arabic newspaper says Osama bin Laden warned three weeks ago that he would attack American interests, and he promised that his attack would be a very big one, and this one would certainly appear to qualify. Washington police are now telling Fox News Channel that a plane is flying up the Potomac River toward Washington, D.C. at a high rate of speed. It's unknown at this time if the plane is the same plane that police were warning about earlier, but it is uh, headed up the Potomac toward Washington. Now, we had reports that uh, fighter jets had been scrambled to patrol the skies over Washington. Not sure how that plays with this, but uh, obviously we are probably in for a little bit more news that we don't need uh, very shortly. Wins News Time is 11.33. If you're just joining us in the course of the last three hours, not even, uh, the world has become a very different place, Manhattan in particular, with two planes crashing into both towers of the World Trade Center. Both towers of the World Trade Center have collapsed with apparent massive loss of life. In addition to this... A plane has crashed into the Pentagon, and there has been another plane crash in western Pennsylvania. Not sure if that's connected with any of this, but it does appear that the United States, and New York in particular, has been the victim of a massive terrorist attack. 1010 Winds newsman John Montone got, uh, unfortunately, quite close to almost being a victim of this himself. John? That's right, Lee, and uh, fortunately... Uh 
I just uh, made it out of there. Um, right now I'm at 175 Water Street where a lot of people uh, ended up uh, who went through a similar uh, trauma early this morning. Um, I arrived probably 40 minutes after the initial uh, explosion. Uh, on the way down, I heard on the radio, I heard, as you mentioned, that it appeared as if a second plane had hit. And uh, I dropped the uh, truck off on Broadway and ran down. And I was literally on Church Street between the two towers watching the flames come out each way and people were running toward me and the people I got to stop and just, just talk for a second or two were telling me this was done on purpose, the planes, this was a purposeful strike, uh, you know, they didn't crash into each other or anything and they were all yelling even at that early moment that this was a terrorist strike. Um, from there I went up to Broadway to try to find the phone since our cellular equipment uh, is not operating. Um, I was able to do that and then I went, as I was going back down to the scene uh, to do some reporting from down there, at least gather some information. A doorman who saved my life and probably lost his own told me to turn around, get the hell out, and, and go back up to Broadway. And on Broadway, there was a triage area for people who had been injured, and I was just starting to, to interview some people who had actually seen the second plane come in and hit people who had been in the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel on a bus and said they saw the second plane come in and make that direct hit. And just as uh, I finished up the, one of those interviews and turned to interview another person, someone screamed out that the tower was falling. And uh, the, a, a glimpse, a glimpse of it is all I got. And it was it was a, a horrible scene, a terrifying scene. And suddenly I was caught up in a, in a stampede. Um, I lost my, my tape recorder en route. Fortunately, I didn't lose my life as many people did. Uh, it was like being at, at the foot of a volcano, I'm sure. Uh, this, this brick and uh, this thick, thick ash, choking ash, uh, acrid with ash was, was coming toward us. We uh, got into a building, uh, into a hallway. Uh, hundreds of people jammed in the, into this small hallway. None of us really knowing how we could get out, but thinking maybe we could get outside the back of the building. And at one point, people start coming in the back of the building, so there was a lot of panic. Finally, we were able to, to convince everybody it's better to go out the back. That would be our only chance. Very orderly, we got out the back of the building and we began walking down what I believe um, may have been Fulton Street. I, I, I'm not sure, perhaps even south of there. And it was like w what we would describe as the nuclear winter effect. I mean, there was this acrid uh, dust all over. It was three, four, five inches high in parts. If an emergency vehicle went by, it, it made it even worse. Uh, people were trying to, to use um, the pay phones, which, you know, you don't even know are there anymore, being in this cellular age, trying to call their loved ones. Other people were hugging in the street, crying. Uh, some people were literally choking. We, we came upon a Burger King, and I will forever be grateful to these people who worked in this Burger King right in this area. I don't know the exact address, but they, they had they had hundreds and hundreds of cups of water lined up. They were giving us napkins to wipe off our faces, um, doing everything they could to comfort us, and uh, and and they did. And then I I. I had run into a, a fellow that I know from town, don't know very well, but but at least uh, through being in the same town, and uh, he got me into this building where he does some business, so at least uh, I can breathe a bit and talk to other people. People have been very reluctant to come to the phone. They, they, they're deep in trauma, sitting there staring in space. A lot of these people, new people working in the World Trade Center, uh, and, and obviously the news from there is is not good. Hey. All right, John, we're uh, glad that you're okay. We have some emergency information to convey now. Retired New York Police Department officers report to Midland Avenue and Capobano Boulevard in Staten Island. Report to Ed Royce. Retired New York Police Department employees report to Midland Avenue and Capobano Boulevard in Staten Island. Also, all NYPD and all operators report to work this morning. All NYPD, all 911 operators report to work, and we also want retired Hired NYPD reporting to Midland Avenue and Capobana Boulevard in Staten Island. And you're to report to Ed Royce there. Uh, earlier, fire department personnel were uh, called in to work to deal with the very unfortunate situations that are going on here this morning. Let's take it to uh, 1010 Winds newsman James Faraday at this time. He's going to uh, recap the situation uh, not just here in New York but nationally as well. James? Well, Lee, of course, it's been a chaotic morning in Washington uh, where a plane struck the Pentagon 
The Pentagon, uh, of course, uh, at that point, a uh, portion of it burst into flames. There was an explosion. And Fox News Channel's David Schuster is at the Pentagon. According to counterintelligence sources, they confirm that it was a plane that crashed into the south end of the Pentagon near the helipad. Uh, this is a route that uh, commercial aircraft flying into National Airport, which is just a few miles away, they take sometimes on final approach as they come to the airport. Intelligence sources tell Fox News Channel the plane that struck the Pentagon heliport was a hijacked commercial liner, airliner. Eyewitnesses telling Fox it looked like a U.S. airplane. Speaking of flights, we have uh, a lot of tragedy to report to you this morning. A United Airlines plane that was uh, beginning the flight to beginning in Newark to end in San Francisco. Had reports say it was Flight 93. Crashed in western Pennsylvania. Outside Pittsburgh in Somerset County. It was a Boeing 757 and uh, United Airlines confirming the reports just moments ago. Also, American Airlines uh, losing two flights today. The first one from Dulles to Los Angeles carrying 54 passengers. Uh, the other flight from Boston to Los Angeles carrying over 100 passengers and crew members. And uh, it, is, uh, it is possible that those two flights were the ones that hit the World Trade Center earlier this morning, the first flight just before 9 o'clock, the second flight about 20 minutes later, and American Airlines says that the, uh, all the passengers and crew members on those two flights were killed. All right, James, again, repeating information that came us, uh, to us a short time ago. All New York Police Department officers and 911 operators are asked to report to work at this time. Also, retired NYPD members should report to Midland Avenue and Campobana Boulevard in Staten Island and report there to Ed Royce. We're going to uh, make our first attempt to return to a bit of normalcy this morning, although that may be uh, quite a long time in coming, by going to traffic and transit on the ones. And here's Pete Toriello. Pete? Lay, New Jersey transit buses are suspended in and out of New York City. The Lincoln, the Holland Tunnels, the George Washington Bridge are all closed both ways. Tappan Zee Bridge is open in both directions. However, we do have some very heavy traffic rolling into Rockland County and uh, fairly light traffic into Westchester. Also, the... Queens Midtown Tunnel, Manhattan bound is closed. However, the Queens bound Midtown Tunnel is available. So if you're trying to get out of Manhattan right now, you can use the Queens Midtown Tunnel. It appears that the 59th Street Bridge is closed both ways. At the Triborough Bridge, the Queens bound lanes are open. However, the Triborough Bridge going into the Bronx and Manhattan is shut down. The Whitestone Bridge and the Throgs Neck Bridge into the Bronx are also closed. The Queens bound Whitestone and Throgs Neck Bridges are open. The Brooklyn Battery Tunnel is shut down in both directions. Also, the Bayonne Bridge. Bridge, the Outer Bridge Crossing, the Gothels Bridge, and the Verrazano are also reported closed at this time. City subway service in Manhattan has been totally shut down. There is word that there may be some service operating in the outer boroughs. All of the airports are shut down as well. Taking a look around here on the 1010 Winds Jam Cam, I can tell you the Cross Bronx is at a complete standstill from off the Bruckner system and running all the way to the George Washington Bridge. Of course, there's no traffic coming eastbound off of the GWB. We also have delays on the major Deegan ramp structures trying to get over to the Cross Bronx and the George Washington Bridge. Another area where we've been seeing some very heavy traffic is on the Belt Parkway heading westbound away from Kennedy Airport. Right now, I'm looking at the Long Island Expressway and the Grand Central Parkway. and doesn't seem to be too bad here coming in through Queens. Lee, we also had some listeners call in telling us that they were diverted away from Queens on the Northern State Parkway. They were heading westbound trying to get onto the Grand Central and they were not permitted even to get into Queens. We don't know if that practice is also in effect right now on the Southern State or the LIE, but some people were indeed turned away on the Northern State. And we'll have more traffic coming up shortly on 1010 Winds. Okay, Pete Torriello, another claim of responsibility this morning for the horrific carnage that has been visited upon the United States. CNN reporting that Islamic Jihad is taking responsibility. We got a report earlier from an Arabic language newspaper editor in London that Osama bin Laden was planning an attack. Uh, mentioned it three weeks ago and said that his attack against American interests would be a large one. Also in the mix, Sheikh Ahmed Yassin. He is the uh, spiritual leader of Hamas. 
and uh, he says, and we quote, First, we do not support attacks on civilians, and we do not support aggression towards innocent people. However, the United States should revise its current stance and should look again at its position very carefully towards people all over the world. If the U.S. doesn't be targeted and suffer the same way as other people are through oppression, injustice, and exploitation. In that regard, America finds itself today weakened in the face of the rest of humanity, taking its own revenge against American oppression and injustice. The words of Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, the spiritual leader of Hamas. 1010 Winds reporter Juliet Papa is downtown near the scene of the disaster. And Juliet, you weren't there when the plane hit, but you were there when the buildings came down. I was uh, heading south on Broadway in my car when uh, I just saw this massive grayish brown smoke. And uh, obviously it, people just started running northward in a complete panic. It was just people falling on top of each other and running and, and crying and people covering their mouths. It was just a horrific scene as cars were trying to head south and uh, people were just heading north. And uh, people, civilians, are trying to direct traffic away from the area. But with me is a, a woman, Olivia. She works at 40 Worth Street. She had come out of the subway right after the planes crashed. Olivia, just tell me what it was like when you came onto the street. Well, actually, when I, I first... Um got out of the subway, there were people running into the station crying and screaming uh, in total panic. When uh, I got outside, I realized what had happened, and you could see that it was an airplane that had hit the first tower, the northernmost tower. Uh, everyone around were in shock. I thought at first that uh, it had gone through to the other uh, building, but um, some uh, tourists from Spain uh, made it clear to me that it was two planes that I've hit. Um, I walked uh, to my office and it faces uh, the Twin Towers and I saw both towers crumble and uh, it's something that uh, I, my mind wasn't even working, it was total shock just thinking of the height of those buildings, you know, just crumbling down like nothing. Okay, thank you very much, Olivia. She was on the 11th floor, and she says after those buildings collapsed, there was nothing more to see. So uh, you can imagine just the, the, the height of that building that just came toppling down, both buildings that came down. She said the pigeons right below her window just went for cover instinctively. She said she felt the debris even flying through the air, hitting the window where she was sitting at. And right now she's just remaining in this building uh, for safety. She's spoken to her husband, who she said, ironically, or was supposed to come down to Lower Manhattan to one of the buildings and he felt sick and he didn't go in. She says he would have been in there when this happened. So this is just tragedy all around. Earlier, uh, as I said, when I was driving down and I was even walking down the streets, uh, we saw firefighters on their trucks, uh, really not even fully dressed in their uniform. Some had sneakers on. They didn't even have all their garb on. Apparently they just jumped on these trucks and kept heading downtown. Apparently some of them looked like they were off duty because because they were in uh, four-wheel drive vehicles that must have been personal vehicles that were heading down here. Some had uniforms on, so you knew they were firefighters, and some did not. So you knew they were just all getting together from wherever they were, and they just kept, kept uh, heading downtown. It seems like they're sort of evacuating this whole lower Manhattan area because they kept pushing me northward. I was on the, the telephone live with you uh, going live doing a broadcast about an hour or so ago when that second tower was started to come down. And I was literally yanked off the phone uh, and told to run because for everybody's safety, they just had to get out of that area. Okay, Julia, just for the record, all off-duty fire department personnel and all off-duty uh, police department personnel and 911 operators have been ordered to return to work. Also, uh, retired New York police department personnel should report to Midland Avenue and Campobana Boulevard in Staten Island and report to Ed Royce, who will meet you there. We need all the help we can get this morning. And as New Yorkers try to uh, come to grips with the incomprehensible carnage, and we don't even have uh, death or injury told yet, there is reaction from the West Bank. Thousands of Palestinians celebrated today's terror attacks upon the United States, chanting, God is great, and handing out candy to passers-by. This, even as their leader, Yasser Arafat, said that he was horrified by the attacks. Reaction from the West Bank this morning. 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum uh, was with us. I guess he has uh, fallen off the line. Let's go to 1010 Winds newsman Al Jones. He was one of the later people to arrive on the scene, but I guess you were there in time to watch one of the towers come down.
Well, Lee, I was heading up uh, West Broadway. I'd parked on Canal and walking up West Broadway, and I could see both the towers because it was still clear outside, and you could see them. They almost looked like two cigarettes burning down, the top smoldering, one quite a bit shorter than the other. And we got up all the way to within three blocks when part of the tower gave way and everybody started to run and scream. It sounded like a jet plane going overhead, this roar and the dirt flying up, ash pouring, billowing down the street, people screaming and running. I made it back about two blocks before a uh, superintendent reached out and grabbed me, and he pulled me into his building. And we're sitting there in the entryway as this dirt's going by, and then a woman on her hands and knees crawling by, crying, screaming. We went out, we grabbed her, we pulled her in and got inside there while people were just running by and screaming and yelling. And two blocks away where I'd been standing, some of the cars had burst into flames, some of the debris falling was on fire. And it was just a scene like I've never, well, I guess I had seen the ash before from Mount St. Helen in 1979. But uh, the people screaming and running, it's like something you'd never expect in New York. You never thought you'd see just all-out panic in the streets. Uh, right now, a semblance of calm has kind of returned to this area. We've been pushed back to Chamber Street, where police are setting up a perimeter of sorts. If I sound muffled, it's because I have a mask over my face. That's kind of standard wear down here. Everybody either has coats, T-shirts, bandanas, or, if you're lucky, one of these paper masks across your face because the air is still filled with this choking ash as people try to kind of establish their ground, kind of figure out where they are, get their bearings, police establish the area, and we all just sit here and look at this uh, huge cloud of smoke and ash that's still billowing out of lower Manhattan. Okay, Al, I guess uh, the good news is that uh, things are not so bad that they're actually calling up retired police officers. They only want all off-duty police officers to report to Midland Avenue and Capabana Boulevard in Staten Island, and uh, if you're retired, you can stay retired, at least for now. That is the latest corrected word from the New York Police Department uh, transmitted here to 1010 Winds. In addition, the fire department has called up all off-duty personnel. All off-duty fire personnel should report to their fire station where they're assigned. And at St. Vincent's Hospital in Greenwich Village, they are asking for plastic surgeons and burn specialists to report. If you're not on duty at your usual hospital, please report to St. Vincent's Hospital on West 11th Street. A goodly many of the injured have apparently been taken there. Winds News Time 1151. Of course, this is having uh, not a positive impact on traffic and transit. Here's Pete Toriello. Just looking at the uh, East River crossings here, Lee. We have no traffic yet coming across the Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge, 59th Street Bridge closed. Midtown Tunnel is not available co to come into Manhattan. However, you can use the Midtown Tunnel if you're going outbound to Queens. Also, the Bronx-bound Whitestone and Throgs Neck Bridges are closed, but they are open for Queens-bound commuters. The Lincoln, the Holland Tunnels, the George Washington Bridge, the Verrazano Narrows Bridge are shut down in both directions. The Tappan Zee Bridge is open both ways. Traffic is moving well across the span from either side right now. We also have the Triborough Bridge uh, Queensbound League open. However, it is shut down at the Triborough going into the Bronx and Manhattan. The Bayonne Bridge, the Gothels Bridge, and the Outer Bridge Crossing are also closed. New Jersey Transit buses are suspended in and out of New York City. At uh, Metro North, uh, service is suspended in both directions. Long Island Railroad is also suspended, and New Jersey Transit is not running anything into New York City. They say they're trying to get as many trains and as much equipment available to get people out of the city on the New Jersey Transit lines. All three airports are shut down, as are all airports across the country at this time. And I'll have more traffic coming up at about 12.01 on 1010 Wednesday. All right, Pete. Uh, in addition to the tragedy unfolding here in the New York area, there are problems in Washington, also in western Pennsylvania. Let's get the latest on those situations from 1010 Winds newsman James Faraday. Lee, an explosion and a fire at the Pentagon this morning after a terrorist attack there. Fox News Channel correspondent David Schuster at the Pentagon says a plane slammed into a wall of the building. Eyewitnesses are telling us that at approximately 9.40 this morning, a U.S. airplane uh, was headed, it seemed, towards National Airport, which is just a couple of miles away from the Pentagon, uh, when it then apparently veered, flew too low, and crashed into the south wall by the helipad. Uh, the helipad is, is sort of a helicopter landing pad that is used for the Secretary of Defense and, and military leaders when they uh, travel sometimes in and out of the Pentagon. And apparently on that side, eyewitnesses who were on Highway 110 and 395, which have a great vantage point of that side of the Pentagon, reported a huge ball of fire and smoke billowing out. There's no immediate word on injuries at the Pentagon. Among the many explosions in Washington, one near the Supreme Court building, as we hear from Fox News Channel's Brian Wilson. I was just here in front of the Capitol, which, by the way, has been evacuated, and back toward the Supreme Court area, we just heard a low, muffled thud. It sounded like a small explosion.
explosion. Sirens are going off around this city like you cannot believe. And just overhead a moment ago, something I have never seen in Washington in the 16 years I've been here, military jets are, uh, are now patrolling the skies over Washington, D.C. The White House, along with all other federal buildings in Washington, has been evacuated as a precaution. This is Fox News Channel's Jim Angle. The roads around the White House, the streets around the White House, were blocked seconds ago. Uh, members of the Uniformed Division of the Secret Service ran out to intersections and started diverting traffic. There are emergency vehicles on almost every block around the White House. The road south of the White House has also been blocked. And as you know, the White House is being evacuated. Federal employees are standing on the street corners in and around the White House, uh, having left the building for fear of another attack. And in the middle of all this, a large plane has crashed in western Pennsylvania. Officials at Somerset County Airport say the plane went down just north of the airport, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. The plane is believed to be a Boeing 767, a United Airlines flight from Newark to San Francisco. Airline officials identify it as Flight 93. They did not immediately say how many people were on board. It went down about 10 a.m. New York time, eight miles east of Jennerstown, Pennsylvania. The crash came after this morning's terror attacks on the World Trade Center and then another plane crash at the Pentagon. Uh, American Airlines says it lost two flights, apparently, to this terrorist attack. Uh, flight 11 from Dulles to Los Angeles, carrying 54 passengers. And Flight 77 from Boston to Los Angeles, carrying 64 people. American Airlines reporting that uh, all the passengers and crew members were killed in the hijackings and crashes of those two planes. Lee? All right. Uh, this is inarguably, I believe, the worst day in the history of New York City. And we don't even have the death toll in yet from the attacks on the twin World Trade Center towers, which, uh, as of a few hours ago, are no more. Both have crumbled into dust, leaving the skyline. The way it appeared uh, before 1970. In addition to New York City police and firefighters being called in, all of them, whether on duty or not, Nassau and Suffolk firefighters are being asked to call Queens dispatchers at the following number. 718-476-6244. 718-476-6244. There are two staging areas in Queens, one at Shea Stadium, another at Cunningham Park, and firefighters should report as units. This call going out to Nassau and Suffolk firefighters. Two staging areas in Queens, one at Shea, the other at Cunningham Park, and you should call the Queens dispatchers at 718-476-6244. In addition, there's been a call from St. Vincent. St. Vincent's Hospital on West 11th Street. They would like plastic surgeons and burn specialists to report. They're obviously taking care of a goodly many of the injured who've been brought from the World Trade Centers. This uh, EMT was working the World Trade Center when one of the towers came down. He's lucky to be alive. There's no words to describe what's going on out there. I mean, you see bodies just coming a half hour later, still coming out of the goddamn sky. Devastating. Devastating. I can't imagine anything worse than this. It's got to be... I can't imagine. You know everybody on the plane must have died. The floor, I got friends of mine on 104th floor, friends on other buildings. I just spoke to one of my friends a half hour prior to that, getting ready to go upstairs to go to work. It's devastating. I mean, I've seen a lot of construction accidents. I've seen a lot of bad things happen. I've never seen a jet fall out of the sky into a building, no less once, but twice. And uh, that fellow told us that he was unable to find his partner who had been working with him in the building. And while uh, most of lower Manhattan has been evacuated, we still have uh, some of our reporters down there, including 1010 Winds newsman Steve Kastenbaum. Steve? And I uh, just happened to get out into uh, lower Manhattan from downtown Brooklyn just by uh, chance and circumstance, being in the right place at the right time. Immediately after uh, these two planes hit the World Trade Center buildings, lower Manhattan was completely shut down. Uh, people were evacuated on foot by the thousands crossing the Brooklyn Bridge. And at the base of the Brooklyn Bridge in downtown Brooklyn, uh, firefighters both off and on duty, out and in, of u and in uniform, were just standing at the base of the bridge waiting for emergency services vehicles to come by. And as they did, they would stop. Guys would just pile in, jump on any which way they could, and they sped across the bridge. I jumped onto one of those vehicles with them. And as soon as we got to uh, across from City Hall, you heard the screaming in the streets. You looked up and you saw the South Tower collapsing to the ground, creating 
creating a massive fireball and uh, a, a ball of debris and dust. Uh, Ron Butler is a city building engineer. He works down here at the courts near City Hall. Right after the first plane hit uh, the South Building, he ran down to the World Trade Center to look for his brother who works at one of the buildings. And then all of a sudden he heard the uh, jet engines overhead. Just stand right there, right across the street from the building. We were looking at the, at the World Trade Center, at the, the building one. That was the flames were shooting out, and we were standing right there. And then you heard a plane's engine? We heard the plane's engine. And we looked up, and then the plane was coming right towards the building. And it slammed into the building, and then... It, and then we, uh, we were running, but I kept turning back, turning back looking, and, and he kept pushing me, pushing me, pushing me, and then... This is the officer you were with? The officer I was with. He kept pushing me. He said, come on, we got to get out of here. Come on, come on, come on. And he kept pushing and pushing, and then, and then he heard the explosion. And at that point, he got struck in the head with a piece of metal debris. The police officer he was with also got struck in the leg with a piece of metal debris, and his uniform caught fire. They were rushed to a, a hospital here downtown. He said it was utter pandemonium in the emergency room. And there were just thousands upon thousands of stories like this. People dazed and confused were running from lower Manhattan out of the dust ball covered in gray soot, uh, completely just in shock, can't comprehend what had just happened to them. And there is very little comprehending of that. 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum live in lower Manhattan, the scene of untold tragedy with uncounted dead and injured this morning on a day that has likely forever changed New York City. This is 1010 Winds, WINS News.